But first, tomorrow marks one week since the U.S. Capitol was overrun by protesters seeking to overturn the results of the presidential election. In the hours after the chaos, almost all legislators denounced the violence and all Democrats the president's role in it. Six days later, most Republicans remain silent on that point. News 5's John Kosick joins us. And John, <laughs> it's not for a lack of trying. Yeah, no, so not since last Wednesday, our, our news desk, our web staff, our investigative team and myself have been reaching out to our Republican lawmakers in the state looking for statements or interviews related to the president's action last week. For the most part since then, it's been radio silence. Hey, John Kasich from News 5 in Cleveland, calling to see if the congressman would be available for a quick interview today on the... Through calls and emails, News 5 has reached out over the last week to Ohio's Republican lawmakers, asking them about the overtaking of the Capitol January 6th and any role the president played in it. Yes, there were statements sent announcing the violence, but nothing related to any role the president played and no interviews granted. Nothing from Congressman Bob Gibbs, who represents Ohio's 7th Congressional District, south and west of Cleveland, Gibbs was one of 121 Republicans who voted to object to the Electoral College vote after order was restored. His only tweets even since then were going after Twitter after it suspended President Trump's account for their failure to take similar action in the past against China and Iran. Congressman Jim Jordan, whose district includes some of Cleveland's western suburbs today denouncing the attacks on the president, brought by those calling on Vice President Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment, ruling the president unfit. We're here again to consider a Democrat resolution to attack the president just eight days before he has said he will leave office. The committee chair taking issue with that. They came here to destroy things, to desecrate things. Uh, and they did so because the president of the United States told them to go do it. As a representative democracy, your representatives are accountable to you. So we asked on Facebook and Twitter what questions you would have for them. Jacqueline wants to know why they are not taking this more seriously. This is not a partisan issue. Tim and Debbie say, hold the president accountable to set a precedent for future presidents. But Mike says he's still looking for proof of insurrection from the president, comparing this to another Russiagate. And a wide range of comments and questions for sure that when we hear back from those lawmakers that we reached out to, we will pass on as well. So, John, what about the U.S. senators? I know Senator Brown has been very vocal calling for accountability. Anything from Senator Portman? Senator Portman actually responded within the past hour saying that in both of his words and actions, President Trump, President Trump bears some responsibility for what happened. And in light of the new FBI reports of potential uh, violence at the state capitals or at the inauguration last week, he went on to say, calling on the president to explicitly urge his supporters to remain peaceful and to refrain from violence. All right, John, we appreciate you being all over that. Thank you very much.